Hi there. I'm Nikki, the owner of this art gallery. Hi Nikki, I'm JC. You look pretty worried. Is something wrong? Yes, there is, JC. These paintings you see are from the Euclid series by the great artist Strokes. He's painted a new series of paintings recently which I really want to display in our gallery. That's great. So what's the problem? It's not as simple as that. Strokes has hidden the painting somewhere in this gallery. He has left clues that will lead us to the hiding place. Ooh, sounds like a treasure hunt. I can help you out, Nikki. Great. Let's look at the first clue. Okay, these are the figures we need. JC, can you read the clue out? Which one of us is bigger? The color leads you to what you seek. Hmm. So we need to compare the sizes of these two figures. How can we do that? These two look almost the same to me. Don't worry, JC. We'll find the areas of these two shapes since area is the amount of surface enclosed within the boundary of a shape. It will help us in comparing the sizes of these two shapes and finding the bigger one. How do we measure area? I know a simple method to calculate area, JC. Please get me a graph sheet from that desk. This graph paper has small squares of side 1 cm drawn on it. The area of each of these squares is 1 square centimeter. This will help us in finding the area of these two bigger shapes. But how does that help us? If we know the total number of such squares which will cover each shape, we can find out the area of the shape. Great! So is one square centimeter a basic unit for expressing area? Yes, it is. Square centimeter is one of the units for expressing area. But sometimes, while calculating a larger area, Square centimeter might be too small. In these cases, we can use bigger units of area. Can you think of any? Well, a meter is bigger than a centimeter. So we can probably use square meter as a standard unit. Am I right? Yes, exactly. The area of a square of side 1 meter is 1 square meter. Square meter is a bigger unit used to express the area of larger surfaces. Okay, getting back to these shapes we have. Let's place the graph paper on these shapes and count the squares occupied by the figure. I think I know what to do next. If we multiply the number of small squares with the area of one square, we can get the area of the whole figure. That was quick. Let's count the squares, JC. The red rectangle completely covers 150 squares on the graph sheet. So its area is 150 square centimeters. The green one covers 100 squares. So its area is 100 square centimeters. So the red one is bigger. What do you think that means, Nikki? Let's go to the red wing of the gallery. Maybe our next clue lies there. These shapes seem to be our next clue. What does the paper read, Nikki? Find the bigger parameter to get to the room you seek. Huh? What is parameter? Perimeter is the distance around a plane figure. It tells us about the total length of the sides of any shape. Oh, I see. We need to add the lengths of all the sides to get the perimeter. Here it will be 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 giving 40. That's right. But there's a quicker way of finding the perimeter of a square as well. 
Since all the sides are equal, instead of adding all the sides, we can multiply the length of one side by four. You are right. That is much faster. To find the perimeter of the rectangle, we can simply add the lengths of all the sides, right? Yes. We can find out the perimeter of a rectangle by adding the length of its sides. Is there a formula for a rectangle too? Well, in a rectangle, the opposite sides are equal. So the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the sum of its length and breadth. A rectangle is 15 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. Adding that, we get 25 centimeters. So its perimeter will be 2 times 25 centimeters. That is 50 centimeters. The rectangle's perimeter is larger. The clue lies in the larger perimeter, which is 50. What could 50 mean? Room number 50. I'm sure it points to room number 50 of the gallery. Let's go there, JC. Okay, this is room 50. Let's check out our next clue. Find my area to get your next clue. Oh, okay, that sounds simple. Let's take this painting down. I think it's better if we turn the painting over, Nikki. We can calculate the area on its back. JC, remember our old method for finding area. We'll use the same method here. Give me the graph sheet that we used before. Yes, I remember it. We counted the total number of squares of side 1 cm that can cover the entire shape. But this painting is quite big. It's boring to count so many squares. We don't have to count all the squares, JC. We'll use a simpler method to calculate the area of this painting. Here, we'll count the squares only on the sides. To know the area of the painting, we need to know the total number of squares covering the whole painting, right? Yeah. We'll find out the total number of squares by multiplying the squares along the length of the painting with the number of squares along the breadth. And in this way, we can easily find out the area. There are 12 squares along the breadth and 18 squares along the length. So the total number of squares covering this painting is 18 multiplied by 12. That is 216. Correct. So did you notice what we just did? What? Okay, look here. 18 squares of side 1 centimeter along the length means the length of this rectangle is 18 centimeters, right? Right. And in the same way, because the breadth of this rectangle can be completely covered by 12 squares of side 1 centimeter, it measures 12 centimeters. Exactly. And we calculated the area of this rectangle by multiplying 18 and 12. That is, by multiplying its length and breadth. You are right. I never noticed that. Remember this, JC. The area of a rectangle or a square is the product of its length and breadth. Cool. I'll remember that. Okay, back to the clue now. The area is 216 square centimeters. Any ideas what this might mean? 216. The number seems very familiar. I know. I had a cookie this morning at the 216 Brushes Cafe in the gallery. Quick, let's go there. Hey, look at that computer. I think this must be our next clue. Yes, let's see what the screen says. If my perimeter is 60 centimeters, find my area. Any ideas, JC? How can we find the area? To find out the area of a square, we need to know the length of its side. But all we know is the perimeter. Do you remember the formula for perimeter? Think about it, JC. 
Can you figure out the length of this square if you know its perimeter? The perimeter of a square is equal to 4 times the length of its side. Hey, that means we can divide the perimeter of a square by 4 to find out the length of its side. Correct. Let's calculate the area of this square. It has a perimeter of 60 centimeters. Yes, so to find out the length of its side, we will divide its perimeter, that is 60 centimeters, divided by 4, which is equal to 15 centimeters. Now that we know the length of its side, we can find out the area easily. All sides of a square are equal. So to find out its area, we simply multiply 15 by 15. So, the area of the square is 225 square centimeters. Let's see what happens when we input 225 on the screen. These clues says our areas are the same. But the larger perimeter leads to the end of your quest. I think we've reached a dead end. Both these figures have the same area. Won't they have equal perimeters as well? That's a very elementary mistake, Chasey. Even if two figures have the same area, they need not have the same perimeter. They can have different perimeters. But how is that possible? Calculate the perimeters of both and see for yourself. Okay, the perimeter of a square is equal to 4 multiplied by the length of one of its sides. So the perimeter of the square is 4 multiplied by 8, that is 32 centimeters. The perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times the sum of its length and breadth. For this rectangle, length plus breadth is 16 centimeters plus 4 centimeters. That is 20 centimeters. The perimeter is twice that value or 2 multiplied by 20. That is 40 centimeters. The perimeter of the square is 32 centimeters and the perimeter of the rectangle is 40 centimeters. Their perimeters are different even though their areas are the same. Correct. Don't forget this, JC. Two shapes with the same area can have very different perimeters. Now, our clue has something to do with a shape with a bigger perimeter. That is, a rectangle. Any ideas, JC? I think I remember seeing this painting called Rectangular Mosaic in the main gallery. Bingo! I know where it is. Come on! This is one of our most famous paintings, JC. It's called Rectangular Mosaic. You know what? This painting seems to be a little crooked. Let's investigate it further. A secret hole. These paintings are amazing. Indeed. Good work, JC. Thanks a lot for your help today. I really enjoyed it, Nikki. Our treasure hunt has taught me a lot. Do you want to know what I learned? Area is the amount of surface enclosed within the boundary of a shape. There are standard units for expressing area. The smaller unit is square centimeter and the larger unit is square meter. We also learned that the area of a rectangular shape can be calculated by multiplying its length and breadth. Since all the sides of a square are equal, we can find out its area by multiplying the length of its side with itself. Some of the clues that we had to solve had a lot to do with perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around a plane figure. To find out the perimeter of a shape, simply add the lengths of all its sides together. The formula to calculate the perimeter of a square is simple. The perimeter of a square is 4 multiplied by the length of one side. The opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. So the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the sum of its length and breadth. 
Lastly, an important concept that we learned was that two figures having the same area can have different perimeters. That's all about area and perimeter. Try and remember all of this. It may come handy in another adventure. Bye.